Hey everyone and welcome back to the Diving Squid YouTube channel. This is the fourth and final episode of my 2D procedural generation series and in this episode we're going to look at how to build and break blocks, similar to something like Terraria. If you haven't watched the last few episodes make sure to check them out or if you have a tile map already set up that's fine. I've also added a player to my game if you want to know how to use the platformer controller check out another video on my channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head into the Unity scene that I've been working on and as you'll see I've got the player. It's got a rigid body 2D and a player controller script. The tutorial will be in the description for this. If you hit play and test this out, what you'll see is it procedurally generates some terrain using the tile map system and I can move around with my player. We're going to add building and breaking mechanics to this. To start off, we're going to want to make sure that our tile maps are on the right layers. So I'm going to set my ground tile map to an order in layer of five so that it displays on top of everything else. Then on my player game object, I'm going to add a new C Sharp script called Build Controller and open it up inside of Visual Studio. First of all, I'm going to type using Unity Engine map so that we can access the tile map features, and then I'm going to declare some variables. So first of all, a public real tile called Grass Tile, then a public tile map called Ground Tile Map. Then I'm going to create a float called Cast Distance, which will be set to one, and this is how far our raycast will cast. Then I'm going to create a public transform called Raycast Point. This is going to be for the origin point of our cast. And then I'm going to create a public layer mask called layer, which will be our ground layer, which is the layer we're casting onto. Now I'm making a float called block destroy time, which will be the delay between tile destructions. If you don't want a delay, set it to zero. And then I'm going to create a vector three called direction, a raycast 2D called hit, and then a bool called destroying block and set it to false, and a bool called placing block and also set it to false. Now inside of my fixed update function, I'm going to decide what keys I want to be pressed to place and break. So for me, I'm going to set the F key to be for breaking and the C key to be for placing. You can change this to the mouse buttons or whatever you want. Once you've done this, inside of the statement, I'm going to call a function called raycast direction, which we're going to create below. So copy our name raycast direction and paste it as a function below. To start coding this function, we're going to start by updating our direction. I'm going to do this by typing if input.getAxis horizontal doesn't equal zero or input.getAxis vertical doesn't equal zero. And this is going to only update our direction if we have new inputs. And then inside of this if statement, what I want to do is set our direction.x equal to input.getAxis horizontal and then our y direction equal to input.getAxis vertical. Now I'm going to get our ray casting in the direction that our player is facing. So I'm going to do this by typing hit and set this equal to physics 2D dot raycast and then raycast point dot position, direction, cast distance, and then layer dot value. This is going to get our raycast generating. And then we're going to want to calculate our end position by creating a new vector two called end pause and setting this equal to raycast point dot position plus direction. Now I'm going to draw a line so that we can see the direction in the scene by typing debug.drawline, raycast point dot position, end pause, and color dot red so our line can be red. This won't show up in the game just when we're testing. Now I'm going to check if we collide with something so that we can break blocks. So if our input dot cat key, and then in my case F, but whatever yours is, if we hit something with a collider and we're not destroying a block, I'm going to set destroying block to true. And this, then we're going to call our destroy block function, which we're about to create in a minute. But copy and paste this and do the same for our place block. So I'm going to set our key code to C. But this time, if we're not hitting a collider and we are not placing a block, we're going to set placing block to true. This will all make sense in a minute when we add our functions. First, I'll make our destroy block as an IE numerator. And I'm going to pass through the parameters tile map called map and vector two called pause. Inside of this, we're going to type yield return new wait for seconds and then our block destroy time so that it waits a second or two so we aren't constantly destroying blocks. Obviously it will if you set your block destroy time to zero. Then we're going to set our pause.y equal to math.floor pause.y and copy this but just change the y to x so it also does it for our x-axis. Then I'm going to set our tile to null because we want to destroy the block instead of placing a new tile. So I'm going to do this by typing map.set tile and then a new vector3 integer and then int position x and our integer position y and then zero on the z-axis. And then we're obviously going to set the tile to null because we don't want to place a tile, we're destroying it. Now that this is destroyed our block, we're no longer destroying any blocks, so we're going to set our destroying block equal to false. 
That's all we need for a destroying block function, so I'm going to copy and paste this except change it to placing block. If you don't want to wait for a delay between placing blocks, change your block destroy time to 0f. And then instead of setting our tile to null, I'm going to set it to a grass tile, so instead of placing nothing, it places the grass. We're also going to set placing block equal to false. Now we need to call these when we input our correct key. So I'm going to do this by typing start coroutine, and then for our destroy block, I'm going to type destroy block. And then I'm going to pass through our hit.collider.gameobject.getComponent tile map. This will get the correct tile map component off the block that we're about to destroy. And then we're also going to pass through our end position so we destroy the correct block at the end of our raycast. I'm going to copy this line and paste it in our place block key code, which is C. And then instead of detecting the tile map, I'm going to set it to ground tile map. And I'm also going to set destroy block to place block instead, because obviously we want to call the place block function. Save this script and head back into Unity, where on our player we're going to have to set a few parameters. So I'm going to drag in my ground rule tile, and I'm also going to drag in our ground tile map. I'm going to set the layer to ground. My ground tile map already has the ground layer on it, but if you haven't got that, select add layer, and then type in ground and make sure to select it on your ground tile map. Then go back to the player and select ground in your layers. Now we need to create the raycast point, so create an empty game object as a child of the player. I'm going to give it a colour just so we can see it. And as you'll see, it's directly in the centre of our player, which is fine for me. So now back on our player, drag this new game object into the raycast point, And that's all you need to do. Hit play to test the game out. And if I turn on gizmos, you'll see that our raycast point generates a ray. If I hold down F and face a direction, it'll break the block in that direction. Similarly, if I hold down C and face that direction, it'll place a block, just like so. You can obviously change the controls how you like it, and you could even change it so that the raycast follows your mouse instead of the player direction. That's all for this video. Thanks very much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for all the support, guys. And thank you to all my awesome patrons.